All right, I've got a, a little mini review on this Best Tech inverter that I bought. Um, just wanted to test it out. Uh, my plans were for it to go into a solar generator or a power station or whatever you want to call those things. Um, I, I'm building a battery. My cells are still uh, on the slow boat from China, but I thought I wanted to uh, test this out and see if it was going to be the thing that I wanted. It's a uh, 500 watt, it's pure sine wave. I do not have an oscilloscope, but I've seen some other reviews where folks have tested these and uh, they test out as pure sine wave. I'm um, just show you my little battery setup and what we're doing to test with. This is uh, my uh, pack, battery pack that I use on my kayak. Um, I've got the latches undone, but in here I've got a couple of the uh, Valens 40 amp hour LiFo batteries. Um, back in here, I've got a uh, the Hall Effect sensor and uh, the uh, transmitter station for that, and then a remote screen uh, monitor for that. So we've got our, our our voltage, our amps, our watts, so we can see what's going on uh, with everything here. It's in a, uh, a little Tupperware case. I got the lid open. You know, I keep it in that to keep it dry on the kayak, but uh, uh, lid open now just so we can see it a little better. Um, that uh, that purple that's just a scrap of bungee cord uh, I found it just wrap around there it kind of holds it centered in the case so it doesn't do anything it's just just holds it centered in the case when I've got it on the kayak and lugging it around so uh, b before we connect a big load I've always wondered uh, and something I've never seen in a review if these things if the USB was passed through or you had to have the inverter on so uh, the good thing about this is it is pass-through. So if we plug that in, and you can see the phone recognizes it's getting charged. Um, if we come over here, uh, it's pulling about 12 watts. So <clears throat> the inverter says it's, um, get in here, we can see it, it says five volt, uh, 2.4 amps. So uh, 12 watts divided by, Five, so that's a uh, right about that 2.4 watts that it's pulling. So that's uh, that seems to be about right. And then if I get another phone and I plug it in, it recognizes it's getting charged. And come over here, and so we've got just over 13 watts. But this is an older, uh, that's an older cell phone, so it, it doesn't have the high capacity charge. So uh, again, we're not getting the full 2.4 out of both of them, but I would imagine this being there. I've, I've swapped my, uh, my current phone in and out, so it's getting about 2.4 amps uh, of charge out of the USB ports as a uh, pass-through without having the inverter on. So that's a, uh, that's a positive for the, uh, for the inverter. <coughs> So now, uh, take a look a little bit at my load. So I've got the wife's hair dryer. It's a uh, 1875 watt. So this 500 watt inverter is certainly not going to run that. Don't expect it to, but just want to see what it will do. So the great thing about this hair dryer is it's got two fan settings there. And then if we look at this way, it's got two heat settings. So we can kind of control uh, the amp demand, the wattage demand, and uh, and see what this inverter will do. So, first thing first, let's turn it on. And when you turn that on, it's got about a 0.7 amp, you know, 9.3 watt uh, idle draw. Um, I guess you can probably hear the fan running. Uh, I've plugged this thing in for 10 minutes, and that fan never shuts off. I kind of wish that it would. I'm, there's no real reason for it to be running if it's uh, if it's not doing anything. But it is what it is. So that's what it does. It's gonna that draw. So I guess uh, you just uh, make sure you turn it off and on and use it on an on-demand scenario. But uh, definitely needs to be uh, switched to the outside of the box or where you can reach the inverter in the box. I have to cross that bridge when I come to it. So let's put some load on this thing. So hair dryer, low fan only first. All right, so low fan. Here we go, we got about a 9.2 amp draw, 120 watts. 
All right. So let's give it a high fan. All right. So high fan. 17.3 amps, 225 watts. So we're still uh, half load on uh, the rated uh, 500 watts of this inverter. And so let's now let's try some heat. And we'll go down here, tip it to low heat. And low heat kills it. But turn the heat back off, and the inverter runs without having to reset it. So I guess that's a uh, kind of a, uh, a cool thing. So let's turn all the load back off, fans off. Um, and then the other thing I've also noticed, we saw that thing was drawn 0.7 7 amps earlier. It's drawn 0.8 now. So that fan does cycle up a little higher and then cycle back down again. Uh, so it's cycled up a little bit higher now. I guess there's a little bit of heat in there, but uh, playing with it earlier, it will eventually drop. Uh, you can hear the fan. Uh, speed cut down and uh, drop that amperage draw down to about 0.7 amps again. So let's go back to our hair dryer and we can't do heat on a high but if we turn the fan on low all right so there we go 8.8 amps 116 watts Right down to medium or low heat now. And now look, we're pulling uh, just over 600 watts. So we're on a 500 watt inverter. And I've ran this for about five minutes solid early before the video and it held that load. So that's encouraging. Uh, it does hold that, uh, hold that load. Now, okay, we're still low fan, and we're low heat. Low fan, low heat, medium setting on both. Let's try high heat, low fan. And booyah! So, 762 watts. So, uh, about 50%, almost over the, uh, the 500 watt rating. So again, that's, uh, that's really encouraging. Um, again, I've run this load for about five minutes and it held it, so not telling if it's going to do this all day, but uh, it is encouraging that it, that it does it at all. So, load back off, heat back off, all right, blower back off. And then now you can see uh, that uh, the standby draw is about 0.9 amps, so again, it's a little bit higher, that fan's running a little bit harder with the, uh, the heat that we just uh, generated there. All right, so next, and plug this. All right, my uh, standard little uh, outlet tester uh, shows you what your, the status of your outlets. If I plug this in, and I guess we can see on the camera, it's only got one light. All right, so if I flip this thing over, and uh, that one center light uh, shows it's open ground, which you know we're not uh, we're not connected into anything there. So maybe that's normal. I don't know. But if I come over here to my truck, I've got a uh, a uh, inverter station. That's my battery charging mostly for uh, my drones and stuff when I'm out on site. But my cheap. Uh, Schumacher 410 non sine watt inverter uh, shows a ground. So, uh, not sure if it's reading the truck ground. Um, you know, it's connected to the bat, just uh, connected to the battery, uh, positive and negative. Just like uh, we're connected to a battery here, positive and negative the only difference being is in a truck with a with a uh, frame ground so I'm not sure if that makes the makes my tester read different or not but uh, that's what it is if you've uh, tried that experiment in and out of a vehicle before and uh, let me know if uh, you're getting the same type of uh, readings with that ground but uh, any of it uh, I am pleased that it does hold uh, a half again more load than it's rated at and uh, 
USB pass-throughs, that's nice. So, what do you think? Should I keep it? <laughs>